Okay, so before we start, um, Sherry asked me to talk to you about a new program and when we should start it. So this program is going to be working on the pelvis and all the associated bones. Reason being, our pelvis is always, it's no longer in alignment. And that happens to pretty much every human as we get older. Normally from all the sitting, but it could be a, for a bunch of different reasons. When I aligned my pelvis, my shoulder pain started to go away because the rib cage sits on top of the pelvis, the shoulder connects to the rib cage here, but there's a bunch of different things that are going on with it. So it's going to help with your balance and stability. You'll be sitting and standing differently if you do your homework. There'll be less chance of back pain, but the other thing is it's the first step in getting down and up from the floor. So if you guys are interested, let me know. Okay. Okay. So there's four because they want to know, Sherry wants to know if we should start it right after this program because next week is the last class for this program. And if she should put it in the February newsletter. But so we have, we have four. Okay. So I, I will let her know. Natalie. Okay. Yeah. Natalie's been in my classes for a couple of years now. Okay. So there will be five. So I'll let you know, and then we'll figure out what date she wants to start it. Okay. You don't. There's no getting down on the floor. Okay. Okay. So that's six. Okay. Good. So we'll probably start the week after next then. Um, but, uh, it's very interesting since I've been doing it, I used to have an issue in my left sacroiliac joint and it just wasn't sitting properly. Like for years, it wasn't sitting properly. And I noticed when I was squatting or deadlifting that this side took more of the weight than the right side. This since that's that sacroiliac joint now is sitting where it's supposed to be. Um, because I did all the pelvic work. So anytime I study something and have an idea, I try it on myself. If it works on myself, I try it on, on my private clients. If it works with the private clients, then I bring it into the classroom and see how it works. Okay, so let's get started. Only if you want to. <laughs> I'm the test bunny. So let's start off. We're going to get nice and tall through the torso. And we're going to start out with the rotational slaps. Once again, we're twisting at the waist, the hips. We're not thinking about the arms. The arms are dead weight. Perfect, Nancy. See how Nancy's hands are slapping against her body? That's what we're looking for. And we'll do these for another 15 or 20 seconds. What we're doing here is we're moving the spine and everything, we're rotating it, which we very rarely do during the day. During the day, our spine is usually like this, like this, very rarely, unless we're reaching for something. Nice, nice and loose in the arms. Okay, now we are going to the behind your chair. And we are going to think about getting on your toes if you can, and then down one side at a time. As one side goes down, the other side goes up. You're going to feel this in the feet, the ankles, and the calf muscles. What happens is if our ankles and feet are not functioning properly, they do not send um, the quality of message to the brain that they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So say for instance, keep going please. So say for instance, you're barefoot and you step on a thumbtack. 
you're automatically going to get that information rockets through your body to your brain, letting you know that you've done that. Same thing with balance and stability. We're getting information from the feet and the ankles to the brain through the central nervous system, letting us know where we're kind of at in space, okay? If we aren't, if things aren't moving properly, if joints aren't working properly, if some of the muscles or tendons have shut down, we're not getting all of that information. And that can be one of the reasons that we lose our balance and stability. So nice and slow, really good, Linda. So you look like you're getting a big pump in your ankles and calves. Yeah. Oh, good. So Zoom people, one of the students here said she gets cramping in her calves, but this helps with that. And that makes sense because we're moving the tissue around. Okay. Oh, by the way, how are you today, Bonnie? Okay, good. I didn't have a chance to say good morning with you running in and out. Okay, let's go back to the rotational slap. Nice and loose, arms are dead weight. We're just rotating through the hips and the pelvis and the spine. Okay, back to the feet, ankles, and calves. When you're doing this exercise, make sure the feet are parallel, nice and straight. And just change sides. Feeling it in the feet, the calves, and the ankles. And once again, this is not only strengthening exercises, but it's going to help the feet and ankles to send information to the brain. Okay, take a break. So what I mean by that is the different joints and nerves and tendons and everything sending information back and forth to the brain. If we're not using a particular part of our body, that starts to shut down, okay? And I have the perfect analogy that everybody will understand. If you're right-handed and I give you a pen and say, write a paragraph with your left hand, there's going to be issues, okay? And that's simply because we haven't developed the motor control to do it with the left hand. You can actually have portions of your body kind of shut down and the messages don't happen. So I may have mentioned this before. A gentleman with balance and stability issues, the doctors put him on the floor, asked him to roll to his left side, which he could do. They asked him to roll to his right side, he could not. He couldn't make the mind-muscle connection to the stabilizer muscles on this side to start the movement, to start the roll. They spent 20 or 30 minutes with him, got him rolling to the right side, got him up on his feet, balance and stability issues are gone because now these muscles here on this side were now firing, they were awake, they were communicating with the brain. Um, and that's be like trying to write if you're right-handed with your left hand because you don't you haven't created the motor control to do this, whereas if you're right-handed, you do it all the time. It's not an issue. I hope I explained that properly. Okay, so let's grab your bands. And it's gonna be behind you, palms facing forward, and kind of pull the band a little bit so that it's kind of almost stick-like, kind of sturdy, okay? Hey, Carol. Okay, and we're just rotating once again. Try to keep the band straight. So you may want to grab it yeah, a little closer. Really good, Bonnie. And now once again, we're just rotating which we very rarely do.
you may notice after a few rotations that you're going farther. Okay, take a break. We're going to do another set of these. What we're accomplishing here, we're loosening up this whole area and it's allowing our joints to move better so they won't be sticky. Let's try this again. Nice and long. That's it. Keep the band nice and long. Check out how Bonnie is doing it. Her band is almost straight. Same with Carol. When the band is straight, it's just like using the stick and you're going to get a lot more movement. Okay, good. So while we're up, Let's do the hip swings. So forward and back. Beautiful, keep going. Nice. How are you today, Carol? Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. Okay, now we're going to do it side to side. Reason we do a lot of hip work in this class is because we don't have the hip mobility we used to have from all the sitting. So if you, for those of you who took the move pain free class, we sp spoke about sitting braced with your spine straight. Most people these days, myself included, sometimes I'll sit and my spine kind of curves a little bit. And that's just because of a lack of hip mobility. I don't know about you guys, but when I do this on my left side, it feels awkward to me because I'm trying to write with my left hand. It's usually one side feels okay and the other is a little weird. Right side's no problem. Does everybody have one side that feels weirder than the other? Yeah. Okay, you can have a seat. The reason one side will feel stranger than the other is because we all have asymmetries. So we will have one side that normally works better than the other. So I was with a client yesterday. I put her in a lunge position like this and she's fine. Okay, no issues. Reverse sides, wobbling all over the place. So we had an asymmetry there. We had just had to work the stabilizer muscles on this side, here in the thorax and the ankle. Okay, so let's do ankle rolls now. And once again, we're doing these to increase mobility and to allow the ankle to send more information to the brain. Now, how many of you feel one ankle that's kind of clunky, doesn't move as well as the other? Yeah, same thing. We all have asymmetries. When we were babies, we had none. 
everything worked really well. You, re you remember? <laughs> well, it's funny. If I had a choice to study from a movement specialist, two-year-old, I'd watch the two-year-old every time because they're movement specialists. Yeah. So Christmas Day, I, I don't know if I've seen you since then. I believe I have. My grandson, who's now a little over four months, is learning how to roll. And it was interesting watching him because he was on his stomach, which he didn't particularly care for. He wanted to be on his back. So I, I watched him, like, you know, take his leg and try to lift up and everything. But it's fascinating the way they figure it out. And, you know, no one's there to give them cues or tell them how to do it. They just figure it out on their own. That's why as soon as we have a chance, when the COVID stuff is over, I'll start the baby movement class, which I'm having great luck with, with my private clients. Okay, so how many people felt a difference between the two ankles? Yeah? Okay, let's stand, please. And we're going to continue to work with the hips. Be putting together another program. I'll make this quick. We need to be stable in the feet. We need to be mobile in the ankles. We need to be stable in the knees. We need to be mobile in the hips. We need to be stable in the lumbar spine, the lower back. We need to be mobile in the thoracic spine, so the, the spine right around the rib cage. We need to be stable in the scapular or our shoulder blades. We need to be mobile in the shoulders. We need to be stable in the elbows and mobile in the wrists. The problem is, and with the move pain free class, we, we worked on this. If we lacked hip mobility and hips are supposed to be mobile, then the lower back, which is supposed to be taking over mobility. And then we start having issues, start having pain issues. Okay, so hip circles, grab your chair for balance, up, out, down, So zoom people, knee up, to the side, down, knee up, back to the midline, down. How many feel one side tighter than the other? It's amazing. We're all the same. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good point. So if you're going to start with movements on the floor or the bed, this is probably the easiest. And just kind of hang out in this position, nice deep breaths through the nose. You did this. And then after you started doing the movements on the bed, you did hip circles and they were easier. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's do a few more. So I'm starting to loosen up quite a bit. Okay, sit down and take a break. How do you ladies do with your hydration, your water intake? Pretty good or not so good? 
most people are not so good and makes a huge difference in your mobility. So I've spoken, I've spoken to you about fascia, the connective tissue, like the nets, the webbing in our bodies. If you take a look at an autopsy and they get to the fascia and they start to slice it with a scalpel, you can see the water start to drip out from it. When you're well hydrated, your fascia kind of slides over each other. You move the way you're supposed to. If you're dehydrated, it gets sticky. So when the move pain free class, when we're doing ankle glides and I said, we're trying to get rid of the stickiness, that's what I meant. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, I mentioned to this to you guys several times before, fascia may be more important than muscles and bones. And up until the 1980s, when they were doing, medical students were doing cadaver study, they'd open up the body and you didn't have pretty pink muscles. You had all this white connective tissue. It's kind of like if you would cut open an orange, you know how you see the white that keeps the segments together? That's pretty much fascia. And up until the 1980s, the doctor would instruct the students to cut away the fascia and throw it in the trash so they could get a better look at the muscles. And I'm like, <laughs> fascia is probably more important than the muscles. And up until the 1980s, they were throwing it away during cadaver studies. But yeah, fascia is just like cutting open an orange or a tangerine or something, that white stuff that holds the piece together. Okay, let's stand up in the side of your chair. Hold your chair for balance. And we're gonna take one step back. And just kind of breathe in that position. So when I say breathe in that position, big, big breath through the nose into the diaphragm. And the more you do that, the more comfortable you'll be in, your, in this position. Because obviously this isn't a great stance for balance. And in turn, your central nervous system, once you start the position, starts getting a little tense. And it's like, oh, I don't know if I like this. And muscles start to tighten up and everything. So breathe into it. And after a few deep diaphragmatic breaths, you should be more comfortable in this position and less nervous. Okay, let's do the other side. Everybody feel good balance wise? Big breath through the nose, just relax. So we're all pretty good in this position when we're moving because this is walking, but standing in this position, our center of mass, our base of support has changed. So we're not here where we're solid. We're here where we're a little off balance, but you don't want the central nervous system to cause you to panic. That's why we take the deep breaths. Yes. So when I when we just switched sides and I went this way, I felt the same thing. Another asymmetry. Okay. Didn't feel it here. There was no pulling on my calf or my ankle. Here, I can feel it. It's starting to go away a little bit. Um, yeah, flex a little bit, whatever you're comfortable with, because I'm not overly concerned with that in this move. The idea is to be comfortable with your, okay? Because once again, if 
I were to go over to Carol, and she's standing like this, I could give her a little shove and it would be no big deal because her base of support is nice and wide. Here, our base of support is incredibly narrow. So if I gave you a little push in the shoulder, you'd probably do this. So in turn, your central nervous system is talking to the brain saying, I don't particularly care for this, okay? And that's exactly what's happening because even I'm a little off balance, okay? But once you take the deep breath in, the central nervous system says, okay, we can breathe, this is good. And the stance is no longer what they call a threat to the organism. So the danger kind of goes away. Big breath. But the cool thing about this is sometimes, I mean, you're always in this position when you're walking, but occasionally you may in this, be in this position and you want to be, you want the brain to say, oh, we've done this before, no big deal. That's really what it comes down to. And then you can start going wider or longer. Then you start getting the stretch happening. But this is helping, the stretch is helping with the joints to move better. So your, your sacral, uh, where you're to the spine, Acrum. We want to free those up, which is what we're going to be doing in the pelvis class. I'll talk to you about that after class. But those joints are responsible for connecting the upper body to the lower body. So those joints distribute upper body weight to the lower body, which when you think about it is balance, it's stability. When we were kids, we had no issues with that. And then we sat down for 40 years and now it's a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you're experiencing there are stabilizer muscles which aren't working properly. So look at it this way, our big muscles, our pecs, our quads, our glutes, those produce force. Our stabilizer muscles resist force, okay? And resisting force would be this, keeping you from losing stability and going side to side or whatever. And that's the same thing that's happening with your walking sticks or why you use them, because when you're here, there are some stabilizer muscles that aren't firing as well as they should be. And you can't resist the force of this, okay? All right, let's do some hip circles again and let's see if they changed a little bit. Another thing I'm going to do for those of you who are taking the pelvis program, and I'm going to do it with pretty much all my programs from now on, I will give you a printout, the skeletal system of where we're working. So you're going to have a picture of the pelvis. You're going to see where the sacrum is, where the sacroiliac joints are. And so you'll have a mental picture of what you're doing when you're doing the homework. So hopefully that helps. So I'm starting to loosen up big time now. And one of the reasons was doing that split stance, which we just did. Doesn't it? Yeah. Keep in mind the split stance is the, for one of the first steps of getting down and up from the floor. Because if we're getting down on the floor, we're doing a split stance. Same thing with getting up. If we're here, we're doing split stance. And we'll be doing a lot of prep for that, not on the floor, Nancy, but a lot of prep for that in the pelvis program. Okay, sit down, take a break.
Well, was, uh, uh, next week is the last week for this class. Yeah. Mm hmm So let me know if you want to do it because Sherry was going to advertise it. And we have six so far. Okay, so seven. So I'll let her know. So it looks like and barring weather issues or whatever, um, we'll start the week after next. We can have 10. Right. Normally, I don't do more than 12 people in my classes because then I can't be hands on. But we do 10 because of spacing and I can't be hands on anyway with the rules. When I first started here, I remember the first class I came in and Terry said, well, we only have eight. I know you're hoping for 12. And I went into the class and there were 16 or 17. It was crazy, which is way too many because then I can't give the individualized attention. So you're aware the Foxborough classes start, okay? The fix your joint, if you signed up for that, is gonna be like we did the first one here. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's that? Yes. Yeah, I do three classes there. And before COVID, I was going to be starting four here, but obviously that changed everything. Okay. Grab your bands. And they're going to be in front of you. And all we're doing, don't think of the hands. Think about squeezing the back together, the shoulder blades together. And you should be feeling this in the mid and the upper back, right around the shoulder blades. Okay, back in. And then out. So we start out with this because we want our scapula, our shoulder blades, to be nice and stable so the shoulders can be mobile. It's also going to and counteract the effects of sitting. It's almost like you're stretching the back, pulling it outward. Good length, Bonnie. Good length, Carol. Really good length, Nancy. Okay, do a few more. Anybody have any pain? No, good. Because you're not doing the left side. I know you can't. I wouldn't want you to. That was strong. You're going to need a stronger band. <laughs> How are the kids doing? Good. Excellent. So if you see how Bonnie's doing, it's nice and slow, just contracting the muscle. Really good. So you should be feeling that around the shoulder blades and the mid back. Exactly, exactly. So Cal just said it makes her pull in her glutes and her stomach muscles as well. And ideally, and that's key because ideally everything's tied together through the pelvis. Good. Okay, you can put the bands down. So left arm, Palm forward, get nice and long, activate your glutes and your core, your abs, and then up. Try to keep the hand with the palm out, not to the side like this. Good. 
Now, other side. And down. Think about using the shoulder, not the hand. Seems like anytime we're doing something with our arms, it's always like, oh, I gotta bring my hand here. Good. Now, palms backwards and left arm back. Use the shoulder. Forward, back. Now, we are very rarely in this position during the day. Unless you're di diving or doing downhill skiing or something. Other side. Now, who notices that one side is different than the other? Yep. Yeah. So ideally, we have to make both sides almost the same. And if we can make them perfectly the same, we're back to baby status. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, I think if I do end up doing the baby class, I'll hand out the golden diaper award at the end. <laughs> you know, I never thought of that, but good call. <laughs> okay, so we're doing index finger out. Up. movement just think the shoulder joint so I have a problem with my right shoulder so this is as far as I can go so think of if this is your arm here's the here is the the ball on the top of the arm and it fits into this joint, which is too small for the ball. So think about that when you're doing this. Think about the ball moving in that socket, okay? Other arm. Ball is moving in the socket, feel it happen. Okay, take a break, but stay standing, please. So you were in the zone on that one. I could see you <laughs> seeing the ball in the socket. Yeah. Well, it's important. That's why I'm going to start printing out diagrams for my classes so you can actually see what's working and how it's supposed to work. I think that will be helpful. Okay, other arm. Straight out. Now let's just hang here, breathe into it, through the nose. This is a position that's tough if I think you said going to the drive-thru, reaching out if you don't get close enough for the coffee, reaching in the back seat for your purse or a bag. Just think of that ball on the socket. Okay, other side. A little slower, Nancy. 
So ideally, when the ball is in the socket, it should glide. My shoulders aren't anywhere close to gliding. Okay, good, sit down, take a break. Does anyone want to go over the floor or bed moves again? You want me to show them to you or you get them? Okay, so the first one I do, once again, I'm getting down, we use a split stance. So the first one I do, and you can do this in bed or on the floor, is just kind of this. And once again, right now, there are certain muscles in my body that are saying that they don't like this position. So what do you do? Breathe through the nose, deep into the belly. Then you'll feel, so everything's loose, which allowed me to break. Cross, and just kind of hang out. But you're changing your joint architecture doing this because all these things that are tight back here are starting to loosen. And once again, I have a couple of private clients that are on the floor now every day watching TV because it feels good to them as opposed to sitting on the couch. Just sides. Which ones did you do on the bed? Did you do this one? Any pain doing that? A little bit in the knees, okay. And then you did this one. Right. Yeah, if you're going to do just one move, start with this one. Yep. But you said you hip circle. Which Oh, I'm sorry. Right, 90-90. So we're thinking of front leg knee at a 90-degree angle. Back leg is at a 90-degree angle. This is really good because when we sit, flexors get in here. So this rear leg now is pulling on the hip flexors, stretching it. That's really good. Thanks for reminding me. And once again, when you do these movements, you're going to find that one side is different than the other. This one's tougher, so you, which means your hip flexors are tighter right there, exactly, on that side. Okay, good. You got up nicely. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do now, and watch me first, I'm going to be here, and I'm just kind of rotating the whole body backwards. So even my foot, do it slow. So we're getting a rotational component for the entire spine, but we're also putting this shoulder and arm and end range of motion, which it normally isn't at unless we didn't park too close enough at the drive through or reaching the back seat for a purse. But we want to be comfortable in all these ranges of motion. We don't want to do it like once a year and have the body say, I don't like this. And then we add load to it like a pocketbook or a rake or something. Good. Slow it down, Carol. Just kind of glide into it. Think ballerina. Good. Nice job, Nancy.
good. Wow, that's serious. You went like uh, 180 degrees. Do that again. Damn, that's more than 180 degrees. I know, it does. You're not going to spin your head around like an owl, are you? <laughs> All right, that's just ridiculous. Nice job, Jeannie. Other side. Really good. Now, do you notice the more you do it, the farther you're going back? Good. Can you try rotating a little bit more, Bonnie? So where do you feel the tightness doing that? Right in here? Yeah, okay. That's an easy fix. So you'll find if you do the sit moves on the bed, it's going to help loosen this whole area up. Okay, sit down and take a break, please. Anybody have any pain doing that? So even though your pain is in the left shoulder area, that's probably fascia. So if we take a look at that white netting that's on an orange, it's all throughout the body. It would be the equivalent if I brought Carol up here and put her in a leotard, okay? Now, I could grab the leotard right here and tighten it up. And once I did that, ask you to move your left arm all the way up here and you wouldn't be able to do it because it was the tightness was here. And that happens all the time. You can have people with plantar fasciitis in the left foot, and the problem is here in the rib cage on the right side. So what you are experiencing with the pain there is probably a, a myofascial issue where it's causing an impingement in the joint or whatever, so you go to move and you have the pain issue. Same with you. You felt it right here in the lower back. There's a diamond-shaped piece of fascia called the thoracolumbar fascia, and it attaches here. It attaches to the lat, which comes up here, and also attaches to the pelvis. And what were we doing? We were moving, we were extending the lat, we're rotating the pelvis, and we usually I'm in place there, and so that's probably fascia as well. And once again, fascia is just like an orange. When you cut it open, it's the white stuff. That, that keeps that piece together. Okay, let's stand up please. And we're going to do, you know, I'll find it, but it may be difficult because they just started studying fascia like 20 years ago. For centuries, doctors were cutting it away and throwing it in the trash. Right. So if you take a look at a really good diagram of the musculoskeletal system, you'll see the white stuff, okay? So you can look for it in the lower back. And once again, it's diamond shaped and it's gonna be white. And that's a big hunk of fascia there. Um, but yeah, let me see if I can find them for you. Oh, it can definitely cause back pain, absolutely. Because think of it, the muscles stretch. Fascia takes forever to stretch it. That's why if you sprain your ankle, it's going to take 10 times longer if you've done ligament or tendon damage because there's no blood flow into the ligaments or the tendons where muscle, you can get the blood going in there and it starts to heal. Um, 
sprained ankles can take like forever. Normally, it's like a 10 to 1 ratio, 10 times longer to heal fascia, connective tissue, tendons, ligaments, than muscles. Okay, so let's go into the split stance, please. If you have a chance to do this around the house, just hang out like if you're watching television or something, just breathe through the nose and get your body, your nervous system in a position where you're comfortable in this position and you're not panicking. So for instance, when you first started this, you would hold on to the chair and now you're not, though I am. <laughs> Other side. The three pads, yeah, and here. Nice job, Bonnie. Do you feel any tightness in the back when you do these? Okay, yeah, yeah, hip flexor. Other side. You still feeling the tightness in the calf through the back of the knee? Yeah. Mm hmm. And other side. But once again, split stance super important. Not only this is how we walk, but it's also one of the major steps in getting off the floor or down on the floor. Okay, good. And we're just going to finish up. It's a rotational point. So right now doing this, I felt a huge cramping in my left arch of my foot. And that's just fascia. Think nice and graceful. I do not do graceful well. Okay, good. I told you I've been training this professional dancer. Uh, she's been dancing for about 40 years. And so I had her start training so that my body would flow better. And she kept saying, listen, you have to stop thinking like a man. Men are always tight like this. You want to be open, be feminine, be feminine. So she gave me a present for Christmas and I opened it up and it was a tutu. I have a picture of it, which you will never see. Yes. Game day. Oh, no, I'm thinking draft day. What's game day? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. So I put on, of course, the two she got me was pink. So I put it on and did something in front of the Christmas tree. My wife took a picture and I sent it to her. Okay. One more time. Try it if you can with the arm up a little. Good. So you're getting more rotation for. Nice job. A little tighter on that side. Oh, okay. Yo, if it hurts, don't do it. Okay, let's just finish up. It's Carol's favorite. Nice and long. And just rotational slap. Nice and easy. We're turning at the waist. The arms are dead weight. The arms are just slapping against your body. Yep. 
Yeah, doesn't it? So Zoom people, one of the students was just saying her body moves much smoother now. And that's actually what's happening because our fascia should glide over each other. Okay, good. We are all set. Thank you. So next week is the last class for this, and then the pelvic workshop will start the week after. So if you want to let Sherry know if she's interested because she's going to advertise it.